To say Cicely Tyson was an American legend would be too great an understatement. We were honored to speak with her on Wednesday when we recorded this show and devastated to learn of her passing yesterday. She was a trailblazer who broke barriers for black actresses and women everywhere. Cicely was a portrait in courage, dignity, and grace. We feel very fortunate to share with you her last interview. Our next guest has three Emmys, a Tony Award, an honorary Oscar, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. She is the legendary Cicely Tyson. Welcome to the show, Miss Tyson. Miss Tyson, you are a true New Yorker, born and raised yes. right here in New York City. A stranger made a prediction about you as um, a baby, right? When you were a baby? Yes. Uh, my mother was pushing me in a baby carriage, and this woman stopped her and started uh, playing with me and turned to my mother and said, take care of this child. She has a sixth sense. Wow. She's wow. going to make you very proud one day, and she will take care of you in your old age. That is <sighs> remarkable. You know, I was, Kelly and I were texting each other while reading your book, and it is gripping from the very beginning. And I was surprised to learn that you were a shy child. When you were little, you were shy. <laughs> As a child, I was very shy. I sucked this thumb for 12 years. I was an observer. I would sit at the table and observe everything that was said and or done. And so I listened and I learned why people said and did the things that they did. Ms. Tyson, that probably is one of the many reasons why you are an extraordinary actress. All of that observatory skills that you learned just by being shy. But your mother also was very, um, you say in the book, overprotective, very, very protective of you. Um, and you weren't allowed to go anywhere alone. Is that right? None of us. There were three of us. I had a brother who was the oldest. And then I'm the middle child. And then I have a sister who was a baby, although she did not act nor look like one. She always treated me like I was the baby in the family. <laughs> My mother was very protective of us, and she did not allow us to go any place without her. We spent most of our time in the church. So I took it upon myself soon as my mother left. I would leave the house, jump on the subway, and go all the way down to 14th Street, which housed a John Warnermaker's uh, department store every Saturday where they had a concert for uh, little white uh, girls who were dressed in, um, in white pinafores and Mary Jane shoes and were blonde. That, there was not one, uh, there was not one black child there. And I would sit at the bottom of the steps and listen to these concerts that they would have every Saturday. And my mother never knew. She had no way of knowing, because I would go as soon as she left and return before she got back. Timing, right, to you get know, that window you know right. And her siblings <laughs> did not, yeah. your siblings didn't, didn't turn you, you in, right? No, no, they never did. They, they didn't know where I went. <laughs> We're back with Cicely Tyson, legendary actress and now author mm. of the book Just As I Am, a memoir. You were Oscar nominated for your first lead role. 
Um, can you take us back to that moment? I never thought uh, that I would be nominated for an Oscar. Never. But I used to view the uh, event every year. And one night, I watched it, and I said, I'm going to sit in that front row one day. Mm. And I certainly ended up doing that for the role of Rebecca in sound. And you knew that that was the role for you, but they didn't offer it to you at first. Tell us more about that. They said, well, you're too young, you're too pretty, you're too sexy, you're too this, you're too that. And I said, well, I'm an actress. But they still went off and search in another actress, for another actress, uh, uh, to play the role of the best. And offered it to another actress, by the way. But in the negotiations, it, uh, it fell down. They didn't offer enough money, and she uh, passed. In the meantime, however, I started working on the role of, of Rebecca, not the school teacher. And finally, one day, my, my manager, Larry, came to me and he said, uh, well, someone else got the role. I said, well, it's okay, they can have it. She turned it down. I said, because it doesn't belong to her. It belongs to me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I wonder, you know, after the, after you, you know, the film comes out, you receive an Academy Award nomination. Mm. Did you ever hear from her? Oh, yes. You we were a very good friend, Gloria Foster. Wow. Magnificent. But they didn't want to pay her enough money. But I have been an actress my whole career who's never been paid any money <laughs> because I never really worked for money. Yeah. I worked because there were certain issues that I wished to address about myself and my race as a black woman. And Ms. Tyson, it is... It is a fact that you were the first black actress on a daytime soap as well? Yes. Oh, the guiding. <laughs> you said that your mom, that was your favorite role that your mom loved, right? She loved you on The Guiding Light? My mother was a, a television junkie for those daylight shows. And she and, and Miles would sit down and watch those shows. And I couldn't get into the house fast enough, fast enough before they were talking to me about what was going on on those shows. Like they were real people. You know, sometimes she would call me all the way from California. And when I get to her house in New York, I, she would start talking about these people and start talking about this person going with that person's husband and this one with somebody else's husband. I said, you mean to tell me you call me all the way? You call me all the way from California to discuss those things with those people with me? I said, please leave me alone. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is great. And you, you turned 96 last month. Uh, it's amazing. We want Kelly and I are wondering, is there a... A, a nutrition regimen that you stick to? Is there a, a certain kind of diet, things that you eat that you love that keep you in such great health? Well, one thing I never did was I never smoked. I never drank. And I didn't I do drugs. And uh, uh, when Martin Luther King was assassinated, I was so stunned by that that I became a vegetarian. And I've been that most of most of my life. Wow. Vegetables. 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 
Well, it is uh, such a pleasure and a treat to speak with you. Congratulations it's our on the book. Honor. We are honored to, ha to have you with us today. Uh, uh, both Kelly and Ryan, ever since I can remember, but before there was uh, Regis Philbin, you know, I have been watching your show ever since then. So I am a devoted fan. Well, that warms our heart. We are, Thank we you. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank I, you, Ms. Tyson. Everybody's crying. I you, know. You <laughs> made our producers cry because they are so moved to know that you are watching our show, our little show. We appreciate it more than we can say. Thank you so much, and God bless. And to you, you as well. Thank Read you. all about the amazing life of Cicely Tyson in her book, Just As I Am.